Day 12, Passage Pathing. I finished part one, I'm working on part two. I haven't quite got part two working. So let's just look at part one. This is kind of a map of a start and end position and some intermediate caves. The caves with capital letters you can visit more than once. So you could go from start to A to C to A and then to end. The caves with lowercase names you can only visit once. So you couldn't go start A, C, A, C, A, end because that would have you visit C twice. So we're, we are to find the number of distinct paths that start at start, go to end. Don't visit small caves more than once. And there are 10 paths through this test data. Why don't we start by looking at building the dictionary that we'll use to hold this data about where you can go from a certain place. So let's just put a breakpoint here and run and we'll take a look at paths. Paths is a dictionary. It's a default dictionary which means if you try to get something from it that doesn't exist it'll give you in this case, an empty list. So can you see that the information in the input is here? Start goes to A and B. A goes to C and B and end, and so on. Um, since we're in the debugger, we might as well continue. We're doing a depth first search starting at the start position. Let's go in and see what that looks like. So the cave um, we're at right now is start and we have a path that shows the path so far. It just has start in it and then a visited set which is empty because we haven't visited anything yet. If we've reached the end then we append the path to our solution otherwise we look and see if this is one of those lowercase caves and it is start is all lowercase so we add that to visited and then we want to see where we can go from where we are and if you look in paths and you look at start you see we can get to A and B capital A and little b And that's what we're going to have here. So now we have the capital A, and this is not in visited, so we can go there. Now we're making a recursive call. The path is extended by this next cave we're going to. We're making a copy of the visited set, and then this is the next cave, which is A. So in we go. Notice that when we make a recursive call, we see multiple instances of the name of the method here. So in we go. Have we reached the end? No. Um, the cave now is capital A. That's not lower so we don't mark that we visited it because we can visit the capital letter caves any number of times. And now we want to see where we can go from A. So uh, let's just see what the next cave is. Uh, well, we could go back to start, but that's been visited. So we skip that. Now we have lowercase c. Is that visited? No. So we can go there. Now we're going into cave c. And now we'll have three depth first search methods on the stack. Are we at the end? No. Is this C lowercase? Yes, so we add it to visited. Now visited here along this path is C and start. 
Now, the next cave. This is capital A. Well, is that invisited? No. I mean, we've been there, but we don't track it because you can go there as many times as you want. So we're going back into A. This is not the end. It's not lower. Where can we go from A? Well, we can't go to start. We could go to C, but we've been there. So now we can go to B if it's not visited. So let's go to B. Are we at the end? No. Is this lowercase? Yes. So we add B to visited. And now let's see where we can go from B. Well, you can't go to start. You could go to A. Looks like we're going back to A. Can't go to start. Can't go to C. Can't go to B. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, there's the end. That's not visited. Recursive call. We're going to get to the end. So now the cave is in end, and with this level of recursion here, we've found the end of a solution. So we um, save that solution, and then we go on looking for more solutions. And when we finish, we display the number of paths and the paths themselves. That's it for part one. I hope to figure out part two so I can show it to you.